In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the new AI voices in software simulation demos. I'm Paul Wilson, and I make videos about e-learning, specifically the authoring tool Adobe Captivate. If you like what I'm doing here today, by all means, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and of course, you can share this video and others with all of your e-learning colleagues. One of the contributors to the Adobe e-learning community, that's elearning.adobe.com, had a question about creating software simulations, specifically demos, and using the new AI voices. And I thought this might be worthy of a video so that we can kind of get down a comfortable workflow for everyone. Let's take a look. Okay, so in this example, I'm going to be capturing the business approved process for finding a flight using Expedia.com. Expedia.com is not sponsoring this video. This is just an example, and it's an easy process that includes typing and mouse clicks, which makes it ideal for software simulation demo here. So I'm going to open up Adobe Captivate here and instead of a new project, I'm going to do a new simulation. So we'll start with that. Now you can do one of several things. You can either do full screen capture, application window, which is what I usually recommend, or custom size. Custom size is useful if you're choosing an application and you want it to record your software simulation demo at a particular dimension. You know, for example, 1366 by 768. Maybe that's a requirement of your e-learning project. Maybe it's a requirement of your LMS. Whatever reason you need to be very precise about that, that's what you would choose. In this case here, I'm going to do the application area uh, option that's available. So if I choose application window, and from here, once it catches up with me, I can choose which application I wish to record. In this case here, it's Google Chrome because it's a web application. And I don't really want to capture all of the Google Chrome stuff because people are probably going to be viewing this e-learning inside of Chrome. So it's going to look weird to have two sets of URLs and tabs and stuff like that. So I'm going to choose from window size, I'm going to choose select app region. And this works for uh, other applications as well, not just Chrome browsers. But if there is a particular part of the software that you wish to capture, you can use this feature. So now I'm just capturing Expedia.com. I'm not capturing Google Chrome, for example, here. My advice would be not to record any narration. Just follow your script and perform the steps that you need for your software simulation demo. Similarly, I really want my capture to stay within this browser window. So I'm going to turn off automatic panning. So I'm going to select no panning. And of course, we're capturing a demo. But keep in mind if, that you, if you launch the software simulation recording from the welcome screen, you can also select assessment and training as well. Okay, so I think I'm pretty much good to go here. We'll start to perform our steps here. And again, I'm not worried about timing or anything like that. I'll just go ahead and press the record button. We're going to get our usual countdown timer. And you'll hear that first screen capture occur. I don't need the recording pod right over top of my application. I'm just going to move it off to the side here. That will be important later on, but just keep it running over there. And it's waiting for me to perform the first step. So for us, the first step is going to be clicking on the flights tab because we're only booking a flight here. Next, we're going to choose the leaving from field. And I'm going to type in Toronto because that's where I'm going to be leaving from. And then selecting that from the results. In this example, I'm going to Las Vegas at the end of September for the Adobe Learning Summit. So I'm going to click on the Going To field and we'll type in Las Vegas. I will like to, I prefer to land at Harry Reid International. I think that's going to be the closest option. And now I need to select my dates. So I need to fly to Las Vegas 
on September 22nd, and I'll be returning on the Thursday, the 25th, and then click Done. Because it's business travel, it's just one traveler, and we can go ahead and press Search. Now, Expedia doesn't load the next page right away here, so you may need to be prepared to click on an extra screenshot that shows the results here. So, and I think we've captured enough here. So I can go ahead and press the stop button. So there's a couple of things that I like to do in all my software simulation demos, and that is to customize a few things here to help you kind of wrap your brain around what's happening with software simulation demo. We have a slide for every click or every typing text that occurs. If you turned off all the images of all these slides, you would just simply see either a mouse movement followed with a click, or the other possibility would be typing text, which is, you know, happening right here. But you don't need to worry too much about the intricacies of that. It's very straightforward. But I, there are some things I like to do up front. The first thing, too, I'm not a fan of this gray dot pointer. I prefer something that looks more like a traditional mouse. I like this one because it's an outline with white over top. It tends to contrast the background. And I like to make it a little bit larger so it really stands out. You can also animate the click effect itself and choose maybe a color that's appropriate for, you know, for really standing out there. So I'm going to actually choose solid red in this case here. For that. Now, if I've made these changes to one slide, it's not uncommon for software simulation demo to have many dozens of slides, sometimes hundreds of slides. And you might want to apply these changes to all of your slides that are applicable, save you some time later on. Now, you'll find the instructions often are incomplete and you'll need to rewrite them. This, for me, is the basis of whatever the the slide narration is going to be as well. So, you know, maybe my instruction, especially for the first slide, would be something like to book company related travel, visit Expedia.com and start by clicking on the flights tab. Okay, I'm going to select all this text, just control A on my keyboard and then control C to copy that there. And, you know, for this, you might want to open up the timeline. You can see there's my mouse movement. There's the instructions. There's the highlight box. As far as the highlight box is concerned, you probably need to resize it because it doesn't always capture that. And, you know, certainly you could change the appearance of it if you wish. I'm not a fan of highlight boxes to begin with but you know, it might be a requirement of your, your e-learning course here. So I'm just gonna click on the slide in the slide sorter here, just to make sure that I don't have any of my components selected. And then I'm gonna click on the audio icon in the right-hand toolbar here. Now, at first you might be looking for, you know, generate text to speech or generate AI audio and see that there's none here. You can only import or record audio. My advice to Adobe would be to update this slot or this window or panel, if you will, to reflect, I think, the whole AI voice thing. It's actually hidden under the import button. If I select that and then click on Generate Text-to-Speech, it opens the Closed Captions window, which is where you generate the AI voices from. I'm going to select my caption here, and I'm going to paste in the whole thing. You know, and this actually should be comma visited here, but that's fine here. And, you know, let me copy that, and I'll paste that later into the, the instructions as well. So I need to, first of all, choose a voice. I'm going to go to more voices here. Okay, so I'm going to choose English and uh, reduce the number of choices. And maybe we'll find a female voice. And let's try Haley. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to get notified whenever I post new content. 
Uh, that's not bad. We'll choose that. Why not? And let's apply that. And we'll go ahead and we'll click Generate Audio. And we can now close the closed caption window. And if we expand the little expand icon for the slide itself, you'll see that the text to audio is placed there. I don't like two things happening at the same time when I'm teaching learners how to do something. So I don't mind the narration starting first, but the mouse movement itself, I want that to occur after the narration is fin finished or nearly finished as the case might be here. So now it's just a matter of repeating this process on the remainder of the slides here. So let's take a look at this next example here. Uh, we'll do a few things here. We'll resize our highlight box. Sometimes hard to do when the mouse is in the way here, so we can temporarily move that out of the way. Put our mouse back there, and our instructions will be click on the leaving from field to enter the city or the airport city closest to you. That sort of makes sense, I guess. And I'll just copy that text as well. Again, we'll click on the slide itself to ensure that none of our components are selected. And we'll click on the audio icon, click on import, generate text to speech. And let's choose Haley under recently used here. And I'll just paste this caption text in here and we'll generate that audio. I want to do at least one more slide where we're doing some typing text. By default, there are no instructions for typing text. So what I'm going to do is add those. You can click that just by clicking on the checkbox next to the instructions component. We will say, enter in your city closest to where you live to select a convenient airport. In this example, use Toronto. And you can position that wherever you like on the slide. That's fine where it is there. And again, I'm gonna copy all this text, click on the slide in my slide sorter here, and then we'll go into the audio icon, click import and generate text to speech. Like before, we'll use Haley and we'll just fill in the captions with that message here. I'm gonna split this into two because I'm also thinking about closed captions. So I'm gonna control X the second sentence, use the plus add new caption icon, and the second sentence I'll paste into that using control V. And then we can generate the audio and I think we're pretty much good to go. So if I X out of here, Again, we can expand that icon next to the expand icon next to our slide itself. And we can see that the actual typing text, we don't want it to occur at the same time we're explaining what we're about to do. So I like to move this past that. And the mouse movement is probably inconsequential in this particular slides case. It's simply moving from like here to here you know, quite frankly, it doesn't even need to be there at all. So you could either do one of two things. You could either move it sort of away or you could simply delete it here uh, or shorten its time span on the slide here. So that should give us a pretty good idea here. I forgot to set the, the mouse to happen after the narration on slide two. Let's undo that. And so our audio narration, Let's move the mouse to the end of that. All right, let's preview this now. I know it's far from complete, but we've got the first couple of steps with the audio AI voices included here. And you'll take a look at what this looks like. To book company-related travel, visit Expedia.com and start by clicking on the Flights tab. Click on the Leaving From field to enter the airport city closest to you. Enter in your city closest to where you live to select a convenient airport. In this example, use Toronto. Okay, so you can see, and of course now we're into the, the, the slides that are not edited there, but the first couple of steps were captured well, and of course we took advantage of the AI voices. There are literally, I think, close to about 100 different voices 
for you to choose from and a lot more variety when it comes to things like languages and regional accents and obviously gender is there as well. So lots of choices for you to make and of course it makes building a software simulation demo a lot easier and I'm sure your students will really appreciate the, the fact that you've got a variety of different voices and you can make it really engaging for them. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.